Okay, so let's see what the media is talking about today. A map reveals a cosmic void where laws of physics seem not to apply. Dark matter findings suggest Einstein may be wrong. Huh, it's gonna be one of those days again. Anyway, hello wonderful person. Just like every science communicator, at some point in life I learned that as soon as you mention Einstein was wrong, or talk about how laws of physics might be broken somewhere, it definitely captures everyone's attention. But I guess at some point you also start feeling really guilty about those headlines, and so I'm gonna try to avoid doing that in this video. But we are actually going to be discussing these particular findings because they are absolutely fascinating and, well, unfortunately do not actually prove Einstein wrong. As a matter of fact, quite the opposite, they prove him extremely correct, and they also show us that we sort of understand the universe extremely well. However, in this particular finding, there is one unusual discovery. I'll mention this near the end of the video. So what exactly are we talking about? We're talking about the Dark Energy Survey, also known as DAS for short. And this is probably one of the biggest collaborations on the planet, except for maybe some of the other ones like the Event Horizon Telescope, that involved 7 different countries, 25 different institutions, and over 400 different scientists some of whom you see right here in this picture. And the purpose of this survey, along with the actual studies behind it, is to kind of establish if we understand the universe, and if we understand what's happening in the universe, by trying to compare the theories of the universe, and specifically the theory we usually refer to as the Lambda CDM model of cosmology, and compare and contrast this model to the actual observations from different telescopes. Now in this particular case though, they only used one major telescope located in Chile, uh, this one right here, and the telescope here is really famous because it also has this extremely powerful digital camera attached to it. A camera that they refer to as dark energy camera. And the purpose of the camera, as the name suggests, is to study the dark energy. The mysterious, I guess, substance or something that seems to cause the universe to expand faster. And because this camera has something like 570 megapixels in it, which is I think about 50 times more than the camera in my smartphone, and also because over the course of 6 years, from 2013 to 2019, the scientists also have been able to use this for over 750 nights in total, they were able to discover quite a lot already. Now first of all, this is the third year, the so-called year 3 of Dark Energy Survey, and here after 345 nights of observations, with about one eighth of the night skies observed, they were able to uncover close to about 230 million different galaxies, and a lot of really interesting features in between those galaxies, including things like cosmic voids, with one visible in this particular image, and with a total number of these found standing at 3222, while also confirming the idea behind the clumpiness of the universe, meaning that the galaxies are not just sort of evenly spread out, they are more or less clumped, forming what you see right here. This is what we refer to as the cosmic web while at the same time also identifying several major gravitational lensing effects, all of which was exactly what they expected to find, and all of which was also required for them to confirm Einstein's theories, confirm our cosmological models, but most importantly, prove several major things. First of all, that dark matter seems to be real. As a matter of fact, this is probably the biggest proof we have right now that dark matter seems to be, well, everywhere, at least in those regions where they looked at. Or in other words, just as predicted in the Lambda CDM models, at least 25% of everything in the universe seems to be the mysterious dark matter. And the way that they were able to see this is by looking at those various galaxies everywhere, and we're talking about close to about 230 million galaxies, using the redshift of these galaxies to establish the more or less precise distance to them, and then establishing the overall mass present in those regions, by observing the weak lensing effect that you see right here, for example, this is one of many galactic clusters that have previously been discovered to have a lot of dark matter in them. And so in this image from Hubble, you can kind of see the lensing effect by something invisible, but something really massive in this region right here. And so by using the combination of the gravitational lensing effects, which allowed them to more or less establish the total mass of dark matter present there, and by combining this with the observations of galactic clustering or galactic clumping, and looking back on this region right here that roughly represented the universe from today up to about 7 billion years ago, while also combining this with some really really rigorous statistical analysis, which involved a lot of sort of blind analysis where you don't actually know what you're going to find, they were able to confirm some really major assumptions we had about the universe. First of all, we have to compare this to one of the previous major releases, known as the Planck Collaboration. This one was using the Planck Telescope to literally try to study the universe 
By looking at this, the cosmological microwave background, or the so-called oldest light in the universe. Now this was a very important discovery a few years ago and there was a very important confirmation of our theories, but this only represented a snapshot of the universe approximately 13.8 billion years ago. It was really important for the scientists to see if the original predictions from these Planck observations would actually be confirmed by observations from some of the later universe, the universe today for example. So would something similar be visible if we look at the universe 7 billion years ago, 6 billion years ago, or even closer to today I guess. And so for this reason a lot of unbiased, blind statistical analysis was used to try to establish some of these parameters including of course the Hubble constant that we often talk about. And well, in a nutshell, 26 out of 30 papers released so far essentially suggest that pretty much everything we believed about the universe seems to be more or less correct. So for example, if we look at the Hubble constant or the expansion of the universe, the original value from the Planck collaboration was about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. In other words, for every 1 million parsec of distance, the universe expands by about 67 kilometers per second faster. In this collaboration, the value was a little bit higher, it was about 68.1. But still within the boundaries what the scientists expected it to be. Although do check out one of the previous videos where I actually go into some other studies that do talk about this mystery in a little bit more detail. But pretty much everything else in these studies suggests that our understanding of the universe from the previously mentioned Lambda CDM model seem to be more or less correct. The observations in this case do indeed meet the expectations from the theories. Now obviously not everything, but for the most part they are more or less correct. There is however one thing that they were kind of surprised about. And this is why the publications you might have seen online mentioned Einstein being wrong and so on. The only tiny difference between the observations of Planck telescope and the more recent observations from the Dark Energy Survey seem to point at the very unusual fact that the universe seems to be a few percent less clumpy than predicted. Or if we were to look at this more practically, the original models of the formation of matter in the universe and the formation of galaxies and so on does imply that everything should be a little bit more clumpy. Galaxies should be a little bit closer to one another, the cosmic web should be a little bit thinner and so on, and everything is expected to look in a certain way. But by using the observations from the last 7 billion years, the scientists discovered that the galaxy clustering was not as dramatic as they expected. Now here we're talking about just a small percentage difference, but it is significant enough to possibly create a new mystery. Something in the universe is causing the galaxies to not be as clumpy as predicted. Now obviously it does not mean that he was wrong and nothing is really wrong with the universe. It only implies that something out there is still mysterious and is not really easy to explain with just our current understanding of the cosmological theories. Something has to be modified, we're just not entirely sure what yet. No one is sure, and so it's a mystery, and naturally nobody is really wrong yet. And considering the fact that everything else in these papers seem to actually prove our ideas and our understanding of the universe, including proving the overall density of the universe, supporting the dark energy, supporting the cosmological constant, and of course predicting the relatively similar expansion of the universe as well, with just that cluster in amplitude being a little bit different from what was originally predicted, overall it presents an extremely important discovery that we sort of, as humans, tend to understand the universe really well, which is really surprising. I think a lot of scientists behind these papers were probably just as surprised that our original cosmological theories from a few decades ago seem to actually predict pretty much everything, almost perfectly. And once again, these papers prove that the dark matter seems to exist, the universe or the galaxies in the universe form the beautiful cosmic web you see right here, simulated in the Illustrious project, and the galaxies tend to kind of come closer together, forming large clusters that we see everywhere, with a bunch of different cosmic voids in between them. And in this case, it was 3222 cosmic voids discovered. But I guess it's also important to remember that this is just the beginning. Remember, they only covered one eighth of the night sky. And they also started this back in 2013. After a couple of decades of doing this, we're going to have a lot of really interesting data. Possibly a lot of confirmations of theories that exist today, but possibly a lot of new mysteries that we can't even imagine yet. More importantly though, the whole purpose of this is to try to discover what's happening with this whole expansion of the universe. It's still a huge mystery, nobody really understands exactly what's happening, and there are a lot of unusual observations coming from different studies. 
But one of the more important confirmations coming out of this is that dark matter seems to be real after all. It seems to be everywhere. We just don't really know what it is, or what it's made out of, or how to find it. We just seem to see the effects of it. Unless, of course, this has some other explanation. Right now, there is no better explanation. But anyway, on that note, I guess first of all, congratulations to the entire team responsible for making this happen. And also, I'm actually looking forward to hearing more about the results and the discoveries coming from this incredible collaboration. At the same time, you can always check out all of this by yourself by using the links in the description. And well, it's a lot of reading. It's actually a lot of different concepts and ideas that are extremely difficult. But these concepts are slowly taking us closer and closer to basically understanding the universe as it seems to be. Not the universe we want to believe in, not the universe that some people think exists, but actual universe as seen in the telescopes. Which of course makes this particular collaboration and these studies extremely important in helping us understand the truth of the universe. But I guess until we discover more, well, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.